and we are good to go. Um, welcome everybody to our Wednesday webinar. For those of you who haven't seen me 400 times on Music Play Online, I'm Denise Gagne and I'm really happy to be here with you today to share some February fun. Um, it's uh, it's a big month. There is always so much that we could do in February and you kind of have to pick and choose your special days. So I am going to start actually with one that I didn't even put in the information and that is Groundhog Day. So Groundhog Day, we don't have a whole unit for it because for me that's always one that kind of comes and goes and I think about it on February the 2nd and I don't think about it after. But if you put Groundhog into the song list, there's a little echo song in kindergarten that you can do. And it's, it is just an echo song. It sort of tells what the groundhog thing is all about. And you sing the echoes. Your turn. Groundhog, won't you come outside? There's no reason for you to hide. Clouds are out, the sky is gray. Clouds are out, the sky is gray. You won't see your shadow today. You won't see your shadow today. If you don't see your shadow, that's okay. If you don't see your shadow, that's okay. So if he sees his shadow, winter stays, and um, the Arctic polar vortex is coming to my part of the world uh, this weekend. I'm not looking forward to it, and I'm pretty sure we're going to have at least another month of nasty, nasty weather. So that's Groundhog Day, and like all the songs on Music Play, you've got concept slides. These have all been split so that instead of one concept slide for everything, you can now easily pull up the notation. In particular for reading songs, I find this so handy. And I've been putting them into the modules, uh, lyrics only, and uh, the one slide lyrics, and then the lyrics you click through. If I'm gonna use the lyrics I click through, I'd rather use the video. There's also piano arrangements, and we've done one in E minor, one in E flat, that might be, I'm not sure why we did two, but. They're there for you to pick your key, and if you play ukulele or guitar, there it is. So that is Groundhog Day, and that's all we have for now. If we uh, ask Mr. John Jacobson to write us a Groundhog song, I bet you he'll come up with something fun. So looking at um, the other things on in February that happened, Lunar New Year started early this year, and it started on Sunday. But because it's celebrated for a whole week in most of the Asian countries that celebrate Lunar New Year, it's still going on. So if you haven't thought about it, you can still do it. So if I scroll down to the L's, there is Lunar New Year in the units. And it's going to show music play songs that are related. I really love Rainbow Color. Um, it's in grade five. Okay, I'm not sure why I did that. I thought it was going to go to Rainbow Color. But here it is. When I have performed this, in fact, I have a video somewhere of my kids doing it. I had some of my kids play recorder for a verse because it's not overly difficult for the kids that have played for a year so they need some experience with it but oh, sorry i can't play it We have 
have this gorgeous new sonar base metallophone. And this would be a really easy one to add up a simple board dune to. I might even be in the wrong color, or the wrong key. I am. I need to be an A minor. So I need the A and the E. Oops. Boy, these letters are small on it. So so I would accompany with A, E, A, E. And it's going to work through the whole thing. So this would be one of those pieces where you could get multiple instruments playing along. And it's um, a beautiful little spring song. One of my mothers um, gave it to me. I had um, a mother who was, uh, I would say, first generation Canadian. And she, um, I asked her if she had any songs for Chinese New Year, which was what we called it back then. And uh, she did. So there's information here about Chinese New Year, which actually would now be Lunar New Year, and we have arrangements. So let's take a look at the ukulele. And again, it looks, I would do the A minors and the D minors and maybe teacher play the E minors so that your kids don't have to do it. When I'm doing a song like that, um, yeah, I would have the kids that can play both chords, play both chords, the kids that can't, you play the A minors, you play the D minors. And maybe you've got a few really strong kids that could play the E minors. So rainbow color, beautiful song. I know, remember when I did it, we also um, did uh, ribbons with it as well, which was really quite pretty. So I am going to have to go back and find my unit. I'm not finding my unit. <laughs> it's way back there. I'll have to go right back. Okay, there's my unit again. So the um, the additional songs, Rainbow Color, Chinese Temple is a listening example. So fun facts about Lunar New Year, you can pull up the concept slides, go through them with your kids. We have the Gong Shi Gong Shi song, which again was given to me by the same parent. Um, her name was Ruth Fung. Then we have a Lunar New Year Rondo, but the one I want to do this year is the Animals of the Zodiac. Um, I actually really like this. It's got a very cute little song, and again, it's in a, a simple key for kids. It would be Do, Re, Mi. So we could do Mi, Re, Do. Do, 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 la, do. A hare and a dragon and a snake. There's a horse and a ram and a monkey. A rooster, a dog and a pig. Now come the animal sounds in the order. So that is the little song. And then the activity that goes with it is, um, here's the concept slides. So what I can do is introduce the Chinese Zodiac and it's I'm not even going to attempt the Chinese name, which means born resembling. It's represented by 12 animals. And there's the order. And it begins and ends with each lunar new year. The zodiac cycle always repeats after 12 years. This is my favorite part because the kids can all look up and figure out what year they were born in and what their year is. And of course, in your class, most of the kids will be within one or two years of each other. Um, 1956 isn't on here, but I'm the year of the monkey. Uh, and so you can go through and you can read what the traits are. And I like monkey's traits. Monkey is sharp, smart, 
and curious. I think that describes me really well. Um, and this year is the year of the, I know what it is, it's the year of the rabbit? Yes? Tell me if I'm wrong. Yes. I think it is the year yes. of the rabbit. Um, so then we have um, a, an activity that we can do. This is the interactive activity multiple levels. You use the song as your A section, and then you have the kids compose. Dragon, dragon, dog, 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 dragon, dragon, dog. Then they choose instruments. I'm going to use scrapers for my dragon, and then I'm going to thump them on the table for my dog. Dragon, dragon, dog, 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 dragon, dragon, dog. Do you like it? If you do, keep it. What other ways do you th can you think of that you could do this? Oh, well, I'm going to use a stick and a shaker. And I'm going to use the shaker for my dragons and the stick for my dogs. Let's try that. Ready, go. Dragon, dragon, dog, dog. Dog, dragon, dragon, dog. So do it as a class first. And then you print out the little cards. And this is a, an old CD envelope. And I always keep the, the little cards in the CD envelope. It's really inexpensive and it's easy because once it's in there, I can see what it is. If I have time, I'll write the name of the song up here so I have a record of it. But now the kids in small groups can make their own patterns. I should do it this way so you can actually read it. Dragon. Dragon, dragon, dog, 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 dragon, dog. And they can decide how they want to play it. So you could sing the song as an A, this as a B. So the one and two beat words are for your littles. So that would be grade one, maybe grade two. And then the next level is a whole bunch more. And those are also available in the package. I might even make up two packs of these animals because I like repetition. I like to use some of the same animals twice. And then there's two beat using the sound effects, which is really pretty cool. We don't actually have the word rhythm cards for the sound effects, but I think that would be quite fun for the kids. So that is the, the thing and where you find the cards is right here. Animals of the Zodiac flashcards. I would actually call them manipulatives rather than flashcards. So there's the dragon dog and there's the different animals. So I, I like this activity. Uh, my kids have really enjoyed when they get to, to be the ones that are the creators. So I model first with the interactive, then I give small groups or even individual students, their chance. Um, what happens when you've got short class and the kids don't all have a time to play? In the, on those occasions, divide the class into two groups and have everybody on this side play for that side and then have everybody on this side play for that side. Then they at least get to perform before they go back to their classroom and it feels a little more satisfying than not. Um, generally, I will have a group practice and I will find something loud to keep a beat and I will count the beats, count them in. One, two, everyone go. And all the groups practice at the same time so that they all figure out exactly what they're doing with their instruments. Do you like what you wrote? Would you like to try a different way? Can you think of a different way to play it? That's national standards for creating. Can you, can you refine it? Can you make it, can you improve it? You use personal feedback, you use peer feedback, you use teacher feedback. I really didn't like the scrapers on the dragon. So I would suggest you use shaker instead. You can give feedback, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but again, we want the kids thinking out of the box, thinking of as many ways as they can to create with the instruments and the resources that we have in the music room. So there are printable versions of this as well. One of the reasons I might do a printable version is to fill a bulletin board. 
I would put the student work. I was at Mount View School on Monday. I taught three recorder classes. Very first time they had recorders in their hands. I had one student hold the recorder like this. Um, that's how new they were to the recorder. And one of the things I noticed on the walls of the school was student work. And as music teachers, we're not quite as good as the classroom teachers at putting student work up to display. So this gives you an opportunity to, to put some student work up. And you know what? Easy way to change your bulletin boards. So here's the easy one. Here's the zodiac words. And here's the animals. Um, here's a solfa practice and a note name practice. So you can take this with extensions as far as you like. Uh, Dragon Dance, this was choreographed for me, again, by a Red Deer resident. It was my acupuncturist, who was also a martial arts teacher, Dr. Wu, and he came in, was gracious enough, he came in and worked with my students. So the kids demo that you see, I believe is my students. I hope it is. It is. Yeah, that's my kids. So you'll see a version of the Dragon Dance. And I'll tell you, it was the hit of the concert that year. We did a, an around the world Christmas thing. Um, we made our own dragon and I used a big runner of tablecloth and we glued glitter and all sorts of fancy stuff. There was glitter from one end of my school to the other. In the performing hall that we used, in the performance hall, the Memorial Center, there was glitter all the way down the hallway. <laughs> I don't think I was quickly forgiven for that. But there's some really nice Lunar New Year ideas for you to do. And you've got another few days to celebrate it before you go on to other things that are in February. So next, I'm going to go to Valentine's Day. And I'm actually going to go to the song list first. So if I go to the song list, and I type in Valentine, I get a whole bunch of results. And I'm going to start actually with Rig a Jig Jig. And I, I kind of forgot, it's one of those songs that I kind of forgot about and haven't used for a while, but it's a really cute little song and my kids always really liked it. So if you don't know it, this is our version, please sing along. voice issues I have to sing down the octave but I'm going to do it anyways so this is what we do we walk um we can walk with our partner or we can walk to find a new partner so you basically walk during the as I was walking down the street down the street down the street now you see a friend and you shake their hand a friend of mine I chanced to meet and now you're going to snap and don't worry if you can't snap yet, children. You just rub your fingers together. Hi ho, hi ho, hi ho. I can only snap right. I can't snap left. So when the kids are upset that they can't snap, I show them I can't snap either with that hand. Let's do that much again. As I was walking down the street, down the street, down the street, a friend of mine I chanced to meet. Hi ho, hi ho, hi ho. And this pattern takes a little practice with first grade, but they like it. Rig a jig jig. So we do that on our legs. Rig a jig jig and away we go. Away we go. Away we go. Rig a jig jig and away we go. Hi ho, hi ho, hi ho. And you keep doing it and they keep finding new kids, encouraging them always to be friends with everybody. Because that's, of course, what Valentine's Day is to me. It's about friendship. And it's a day when we say, we want to be your friend. So let's just do that all the way through. As I was walking down the street, down the street, down the street, a friend of mine I chanced to meet. Hi ho, hi ho, hi ho. Rig a jig jig and away we go, away we go, 
away we go. We get to chicken, away we go. Hi ho, hi ho, hi ho. And I hope you were doing that with me. I don't, uh, I can't keep everything, all the windows open on my computer. So that one I really like and it's lots of fun. I'm going to go into the song list again and I'm going to go to pre K. I don't know if you remember, but um, there was a song in pre-K, I made a snowman, I made a snowman, that was really cute. And I think it came in January. Now we're gonna use basically the same melody for I Like Valentine's. Pre-K, they need that repetition. And so it comes back again, I like leprechauns. You'll, you'll hear it three times this year. So let's do the echoes. Nice and slow for pre-Ks. I like Valentine's. I like Valentine's. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. One for me. One for me. One for you. One for you. When in doubt, wave your hands to the beat. Will you be my friend? And then it repeats. I like Valentine's. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Chocolate mm. hearts. Chocolate hearts. Candies too. Candies too. Valentine's a way to say, will you be my friend? I like Valentine's. I like Valentine's. Yes. Yes, I do. Superheroes. Superheroes. Frozen to. Frozen to. Valentine's a way to say, will you be my friend? So, very simple, very easy. An echo format means there isn't a whole lot of teaching. It's um, it's very simple for your littlest ones to do. And if you've got kindergartens that are young, use the pre-K with the kindergartens. We've all been finding that since COVID, the kids are lower than what they should be. So if the pre-K works better for you, then the kindergarten by all means use it. Now the kindergarten song has exactly the same name and I do like it actually. The, um, the kindergarten is I Like Valentine's. And this one I use for dynamics. And I've added the loud and quiet cards to this because I would follow up the song with the dynamics. Let's, um, I'm gonna pull up the notation slide. So the notation slides are now separate from the um, other slides. The concept slides aren't this great big mush. They're now separated, so it's easy to see them. And we have a vocal and an accompaniment track. If you're doing something in a concert, you can practice with the uh, accompaniment track. My poor voice, I'm going to use the vocal track. And you can sing. I forgot to change slides. So the loud part was the big Valentines of chocolate, and the quiet part was the little ones that were frilly white and red. So you can make up these loud and quiet cards. This is the loud and quiet interactive. I love this interactive. It is really good and we really do need to make one that uses the dynamic terms that's as good as this one. So I'm going to make a loud and quiet pattern. Quiet, quiet, loud, 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 
loud. So I will have the kids say it and point to it as they're going. Let's say it together. Quiet, quiet, loud, 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 quiet, quiet, loud. And if you want to, you can do it with the music. Quiet, quiet, loud, 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 quiet, quiet, loud, quiet, quiet, loud, 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 quiet, quiet, loud, quiet, quiet, loud, 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 quiet, quiet, loud, quiet, quiet, loud, 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 quiet, quiet, loud. So I would bring in the loud, quiet cards for my students. I didn't print these in color, but honestly, this took me one minute to print them on the photocopier. And what I would have the kids do is make up the patterns. So loud, quiet, loud, quiet. And then we would do it. I'm just going to do four. And then we might play it on instruments. Loud, quiet, loud, and I'd get a child to come up and rearrange and make a new pattern. So if I put all of these out, I'd get them to rearrange. So let's swap loud at the end and quiet here and quiet here and loud here. So let's try it now. Let's try it with the tambourine and see how it sounds. Ready, go. Loud, loud. Loud, loud. And then I'd ask another child to come up and rearrange. So we would do two or three, and not everybody would get a turn. But what I would do in my, uh, I did this primarily in preschool, I would leave the cards and leave an instrument and say, it's going to be a center for you this week. And you can go and do it on your own. Next week I would come back, I'd ask the teachers, did the kids do the loud quiet? And they, they did it. It was sometimes a little noisier than the classroom teachers loved, but they, um, they would do it. So the loud, quiet cards are here in, I guess they're not here in printables, but I will put them there in printables. I thought I put them there. Okay, 93 in K, loud, quiet cards. We'll add that for you. So that's for Valentine's Day and a fun little lesson. So if I go back to my song list in grade one, we've got Rig a Jig Jig. We've also got, I like you. Yes, I do. Will you be my Valentine? I like you. And if you have a child that doesn't do Valentine's Day, will you be a friend of mine? I like you. I really like this song. It's Bow Wow Wow. The kids love to play this game. They always giggle and laugh when they see their friends coming. reactions, the looks on their faces is so funny, and you will enjoy it. And there's a wealth of extensions for, for this. There's sulfa notes. If I was doing this song with second grade or third grade, I would probably do those. I wouldn't do them with first. There is um, beaten rhythm. That I would do with first. And you've got all these choices of activities. Where are your kids? You have to Decide yourself. If your kids are already really good at differenti differentiating beat and rhythm, go right to, is it one sound or two? And I'm going to make it full screen. I, one sound. Like, you, no sound. And then you would just keep going and figure out the rest of the song. And in this one, it won't let me enter a wrong answer. It goes red if I'm wrong, so I can correct it. 
And that's with icons. Always we do one sound or two first with icons. That's my Kodai training. And then we do it with notes. And you can name them using whatever rhythm names, rhythm syllables you use. If you use do, do's and do days, do, do, do. I use ta, 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 sh. Use whatever works for you. And then a similar activity to what we did with Lunar New Year. Two sounds, one sound with roses and love. And if you want to just go right to notes with your kids, if they're really good at this, maybe we would just make up a pattern like this. And I would use this pattern as an ostinato while the kids sing the song. So I am going to try playing the ostinato on a shaker, and you're gonna help me sing the song. I like you. Yes, I do. Will you be my Valentine? I like you. Now, doing that by myself is a little challenging, even for me, a teacher. What you do with the kids, divide them into two groups, have one side do the ostinato pattern with instruments or with body percussion, whichever you choose. The other side sings the song then you switch and you give them both a chance to do it. But this is a great way to introduce two parts to your students. It gets them really thinking and that's what we need to do in this world. We need to get our kids thinking and thinking preferably out of the box. Okay, I'm going back to the song list. Grade two is I sent a Valentine. And this is, again, sort of stolen from a familiar song. Um, I don't know why we don't have a kid's demo of this. I'll have to put it on my list. I sent a valentine to my love And on the way I dropped it A little doggy picked it up will bite you and and then the chase happens so it's a little chase game and if any of you are doing it and want to send us a kids demo boy I'd like that if not we'll do it with our uh, choir students and make a kids demo out of it but again it's just a fun song um, one thing I will point out we've got these ask me pages and the idea of these are we want the kids remembering what they did and communicating what they did to home. So it's got the words to the song and they draw a picture that shows what the song makes you think of. If you have a sub in, this might be a good activity for a sub to do rather than a sub trying to play the game when they don't have a kid's demo. So you have the song lyric and the idea is today in music class, I learned to sing the song. I sent a Valentine, ask me to sing it to you. Invite me to sing the song to three people that I know. So ask me pages are included in kindergarten, one, two, I don't think we included them in three. And again, if you want arrangements, they're here and you can see our concept slides are split up. I don't even know what the creating is, so I'm going to look. Oh, it uses new words to an old tune called Yankee Doodle. Try creating your own lyrics with this tune. I made a cookie, da, da, da. I went to play. It would be interesting to see what your second graders come up with for that. Um, another one from grade two that I dearly love, and I want everybody up and doing this with me. Tony Chestnut. I did this with our choir kids, grade two, three, four, five, uh, last Thursday, and they dearly love it. So we start with Tony Chestnut. I have to go farther back or you're not going to see all of me. And then you touch your nose. Nose, I love you. For the podcast, I am touching my toes, then my knees, then my chest. My nut is the top of my head. So Tony Chestnut on nose, I touch my nose. Nose, eye, I touch my eyes. 
love, I cross my arms over my heart, you, I gesture my hands out, toe, knee, nose, toe, knee, nose, toe, knee, chestnut, nose, I love you, that's what, and on the words that what, we clap twice, toe, knee, nose. So let's do this with the kids demo. They can sing beauty. I used to be able to sing everything nicely, but not so much anymore. Now we're going to try it faster. And now we go even faster. This is a great song to review your tempo terms. And there is a concept slide with all the tempo terms. So I can put this into full screen, hide this part. Italian words are used to tell whether music should be played or sung fast or slow. Some of the words are included on the following slides. Largo means to play or sing very slowly and I would have the kids repeat. Um, Artie is a smart smart lady and she cuts these down to four and I think the kids have a better shot at remembering. If you do fewer I probably should do fewer in grade two. Adagio means to play or sing slowly. The kids repeat. Moderato means to play or sing at a medium speed. So I say it in the speed I want the kids to learn. Allegro means to play or sing fast and lively. Presto means to play or sing very quickly. Prestissimo means to play or sing as fast as you can. So I would have the kids repeat. Uh, we do have the tempo posters. We should actually put them in here. Gonna make a little note to self, put posters in. Um, because the posters are in the Tempo Interactive Activity. This is one of my favorite interactives on the whole site. So if I really want my grade twos to learn Largo, Moderato, Allegro, and this is their rhythm reading ability, it only uses Ta, TT, Rest, that's where I'd start. If my kids are doing a little better and they have Ta, TT, Rest and half notes and half rest, I might go to number four. So then I choose my tempo and we clap the rhythm to it. So let's do this rhythm moderato. Here we go. Yes. Ti 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 ta 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 tu. And if I want to really challenge them, we would try it presto. I would only do this if the kids were really good at the first four. But let's try just for fun. Are you ready? Here we go. And that really is too fast for grade twos, but they will have fun trying regardless. So there's lots of tempo activities in here for them. The teaching piece is in the slides, and then you can go to the interactives. Uh, grade three. How am I doing for time? I'm going to run out. Okay, I won't be able to do all the grade levels. Uh, Love Somebody. I really like this song for 
teaching sixteenths. And again, I'm going to go to the notation slide. And I really like the fact that we have these all separated now. And I would have my third graders, if they've done sixteenths, I would have them read the rhythms. Ready, go. T, 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 Ta. T, 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 Ta. If they are not reading it, I could do it me, do a measure, and they echo. Um, the classes that I visit are quite far behind because of COVID. And if that's the case with your kids, you just do what you have to do. So I read, they read. I'd get to the third measure, T, 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 Ta, echo. T, 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 Ta. Last measure, T, T, Ticka, Ticka, T, T, Ta. And the TTs and ticket tickets aren't written in stone. You can use whatever rhythm syllables you use. But I do this game as a little chase game. And here's the kids' demo. You can see they're coming behind and tag. Oh, they've got a Valentine heart. They all want to get picked. So she drops, they have to pick it up and try and catch her before she gets into the opening. And so she's in, once they've had turns, they get to be either the Valentine holder or the chaser, not both. And then the game goes by really, really quick. So again, there's the beaten rhythm activities here to teach sixteenths if you haven't gotten there. This would be a great teaching piece for it. Um, fourth grade, I've got make new friends. In upper elementary, there is a John Jacobson song. If you go to the Discover and you go to Songs for a Brighter World, there is a really nice song called Friends, Friends Forever. I put it into grade four because I thought it was a really good friendship song. And to me, that's what Valentine is, Valentine's Day is all about, is friendships. So it's Friends, Friends Forever. I maybe have gone past it. The sing-along I put into middle school because, again, it's a good friendship song. It's probably the last one here. Yes, it is. Okay, so this is Friends, Friends, Forever. It's got John Jacobson choreography where he teaches. And it's, like I said, I think grade fours would really enjoy this particular song. Nice little reggae. cute little song with all the choreography. The one for middle school that I included and will be doing for the next couple of weeks is the sing-along song. And again, it's got a friendship theme. It sounds like another song that I know. And again, you've got full choreography. So you've got John teaching it and then the full choreography for doing it. Um, the Valentine's Day unit is extensive and has lots of fun stuff. I have to scroll down to the bottom of the units to find the V, T-U-V, Valentine's Day. So lots of related songs, lots of folk songs, um, Valentine specific songs, friendship songs, and then there's a composition activity, and we've got themed recorder mag mad minutes. So if you're doing recorders in your classroom right now, great time to get out the mad minutes and try them. So why use mad minutes? Same reason that 
teachers used to do math drills. And I'll tell you, if they did it now, kids would have a lot better basic skills. It's to develop instant recall. So I name the first three so they're not practicing wrong notes. I give them all a copy of the Mad Minute and a pencil and something to write on. And they fill them out. When they're done, they call done. And I tell them how long it took them. First time, maybe two and a half minutes or some of the piano students would get it done in a lot less time. And then each time they try and beat their score. So I would do the same Mad Minute more than once. But these are pretty little themed ones for Valentine's Day if that's, if you're using recorders with your fourth. Okay, I am going to go into Black History Month. And that also is in units. And it's going to be in the Bs, so it's closer to me. And there's some really nice additions to the Black History Month. So we've got African American singing games. We've got some lovely choral music. I would hugely recommend that you look at Hymn to Freedom in middle school. This is an Oscar Peterson song. It is a gorgeous song. He wrote it um, for a, a Finnish festival and it's sung worldwide. Everybody should know this. Our own Morgan McKee played the piano for this. I think it's one of the most beautiful choral pieces we have on the website. So please, please, please take a look at it. Um, if you don't do it this year with your choirs, think about it for next year because it's just gorgeous. We're actually rearranging Lift Every Voice and Sing, and we'll have a better arrangement for next year. We've got some listening selections. That is not complete because we've got Scott Joplin as well. Um, we have spirituals. And there is discussion right now whether it's appropriate to use spirituals. This is wrong. Hymn to Freedom is not a spiritual. Um, but I am referencing an article in a NAFME journal that talks about why use spirituals. You make the call. You know your community. If it's something that's not going to be acceptable for your community, leave them out. So a uh, slideshow about Black History Month. And then um, John Jacobson made a Scott Joplin bio, which is um, actually a lovely little bio on Scott Joplin. And I... It was a forerunner of jazz and was one of the most popular kinds of music in America from about 1899 to 1917. So if they haven't been introduced to John, there is his Scott Joplin bio. We have several Scott Joplin rags that were arranged by the Canadian Brass. I love these recordings. They're great. And we've got great cup games to go with them. I've done them other years, so I'm not going to do them this year. But um, you can go through. I would suggest just doing the easy one. Lift every voice and sing don't do this year. Leave it till next year um, because we'll have a better recording. Maple leaf rag is really, really cute. So this again is Scott Joplin. And John Jacobson has written words to go with it. And they're very cute and really describe what ragtime music is all about. My name is Scott Joplin. Why not? I play the piano. Every day I play a little ragtime, play a little ragtime every day. So I, I really like that. I saw John um, workshop this in July. Here's his teaching choreography. We're going to just jump in and do the full choreography. Stand up with me and we're going to do it. It's not all that impossibly difficult. Warm up your hands. I like his white gloves. And this and shrug. This shrug. Play piano. Left to right. Right hand. Back and forth. Every 
Again. Shrug. Back and forth. Up the scales. Right hand. Back and forth. Again. Now, left hand. And other hand. Back and forth. This is not hugely difficult. The crossing Again. hands is One funny. Hand. Other hand. Thumbs to yourself. Rotate your hands. Again. Left hand. Other hand. Back and forth. Then. Cross them. That's my favorite part. Again. One hand. Other one. Rotate. Now the A section again. And I will stop there. But you will enjoy this. It's not as difficult as some of John's choreography is. It's... Uh, quite, quite doable. The other part of the um, Black History Unit that we have is um, links to videos about notable historical Black musicians and composers. And Danae is going to add some PDFs with the YouTube links so that if the safe share link doesn't work for you, you know where you can access it. So notable Black American musicians and composers. And then we have notable Black Canadian musicians and composers. And it includes um, Oscar Peterson. The best Oscar Peterson lesson is actually in the learning modules for middle school. And it's January week one. And I put in a beautiful little video by one of our music play teachers named Felicia, who made this video about jazz. I put in the song Razama Jazz by John Jacobson and choreography for it. And then I went on to Oscar Peterson. And there's a whole slideshow about Oscar Peterson here in this module, uh, links to one of his videos. And I try and put in here, it's a safe share, if the safe share link doesn't work, I put a note in, search internet for Oscar Peterson piano lesson, and it likely will show up for you. That's um, the search term that, that you will find, and it's actually really a really good interview. And then we have the Hymn to Freedom and optional worksheet to go with Hymn to Freedom. So I think those are great options for Black History Month. And I hope you really enjoy February. Pick what you want to do with the different grade levels. It's almost impossible to try and do it all. And if they only give you music once a week for 40 minutes, you can't do it all. So don't beat yourself up if you can't. Just enjoy. Um, I had a really interesting question um, in the email. Is this week, January week four, or February week one. You choose. Uh, we had schools that went back to school on January the 3rd. For them, this would be January week four. No, this would be February week one. If you went back to school, like so many of our local area schools on January the 8th, this would be um, January week four. I have put five weeks into March and that's where we'll catch up and be on the same page. So I am trying very hard to get updates done on the modules, uh, integrate some of the John Jacobson materials, especially for the upper elementary, because I think our uppers um, need a little more pop sounding pieces in some cases. So I hope you're enjoying the updates. I haven't made videos of all of them. Um, there's not enough hours in the day and not enough days in the week. I need like 10, 10 days a week and 70 hours in a day. But, um, you know, we can't do it all, but we, we, we give it a good shot. So any questions for me, um, Danae or Carrie Lynn? There are no questions that have come through. Okay, if anybody has any questions, um, I see a question, is credit hours offered for this webinar? If you do it 
on the workshop site, there is a quiz and a certificate. So if you're watching this on YouTube right now, you can pop over to workshops.musicplay.ca and you don't really have to play the video again because you've seen it all. Just answer the quiz questions and then you'll get your certificate. Um, I have a new technique for watching webinars. I went through a whole, um, a whole course and I did it uh, at two times speed. So <laughs> uh, with my ADHD brain, two times speed was the right speed, kept me engaged through the whole thing. So um, if you have to, I, I you might have a hard time doing Denise at double speed, but you can give it a good try. So thank you everybody very much. Have a wonderful February and uh, we will see some of you, I hope, at TMEA in Texas. I'm quite excited to be there. And uh, if anybody has bean bags they can bring to Texas, please do because otherwise I'm going to make a thousand bean bags out of Ziploc bags. So we have one for everybody. Um, yes, it's always interesting doing TMEA and trying to have full involvement when there's those great big huge rooms. So I'll look forward to seeing some of you there and uh, we'll see you next month on the next